I started painting graffiti when I was about 14 or so, and people always ask, you know, what makes you do it? But the question to me was always really, why would you not do it? You're 14, 15, it's a big world out there, you want to make your mark, and no one listens to a word you say. Whereas, you know, one night, one spray can, all of a sudden, people notice you. There was always a lot of graffiti in my hometown growing up. Uh, but I think 3D from Massive Attack had brought it back with him off tour in America, and he'd been painting all over the city. I knew Banksy from, you know, from very early on, and, and a lot of the other artists, you know, that were kind of around. He was a fucking leery little git. You were like, who the fuck are you? But he was mo obviously motivated, obviously talented, and, and you take notice of that. He wanted to paint in all the most abs absurd places, but you never have a chance of doing it. You never get away with it, and he was getting away with it. I started painting graffiti in the classic New York style of big letters and characters, but I was never very good at it. I always used to get things too close together or too far apart, and it used to take me ages, so I had to come up with a, a way of making it quicker, otherwise I was going to get nicked. What he was doing that was significant of the, the change of him from being a writer to an artist was him stenciling, really. That is probably as simple as that. I mean, they're efficient stencils. You get to put something up in very little time, and it's very hard to mess it up. Everyone was like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, what's this gay toy stencil bullshit? You know, I know people that would have beaten him up if they'd seen him. It was that extreme. When I moved to London, I just carried on painting. I, I never saw that there was anything bad in it. You know, you, you live in the city and all the time there are signs telling you what to do and billboards trying to sell you something. And, and I always felt that it was all right to turn to back a little bit, I suppose. The city shouldn't just be a one-way conversation. It was a really highly educated, you know, visual barrage. From, uh, you know, from an unknown force. And in advertising, they used that to sell shit to us. Whereas Banksy was using it on the street as a sort of free gift for everybody. And everyone was talking about it. I didn't see why he'd sell for just walls. So I started vandalizing statues. And that led to vandalizing parks. It just kept going, really. Most street artists, uh, they don't have much talent and they certainly don't have much humour. Well, that's how it seemed to me. Banksy had both, you know, he was a funny guy, and above all, he was a rebel. You know, art has always been interested in rebels, the people who do things behind the scenes, the naughty boys. When I first saw Banksy, I thought, he's running out of steam in about 10 minutes. You know, it's like a comedian just telling bad jokes, and you're bored of it after about four or five jokes, because you know the kind of jokes he's telling. But Banksy just keeps coming up with another one, another one, another one, another one, and they're always totally inventive and new and fresh, and I think, for any artist, that's really rare. So I come up with this idea of painting graffiti over oil paintings instead of on walls, and I was completely convinced it was a genius idea that nobody had had before, and I thought, how do I stop people from stealing this idea? And I reckon the best thing to do was to get it hanging up in the tape with my name next to it. But obviously, if you were waiting for them to come to you, you'd be waiting quite a long time, so I thought I'd just go in the tape and, and stick it up. It was funny, I was going to all these galleries and I wasn't looking at the art. I was looking at the blank spaces between the art. In my community, Banksy was certainly frowned upon as he started to change from traditional graffiti to art. Art was not cool. It was posh. 
graffiti was ours, we did it. It was nothing to do with anyone else. And he'd left that camp. And that really upset people. I thought it was probably about time I did a gallery show. But I don't really like galleries. So I ended up renting this warehouse instead. Turf War was this tipping point show. I took over a huge warehouse space. You had live cattle painted in there, burnt out cars, you know, a little bit teetering on the bridge of anarchy the whole time it was there. And I, I think that's what kind of started to cement its status. And then, of course, there was that fantastic event in Westbourne Grove uh, with the rats. But that was typical subversive art behaviour. It's what art does. It, it gets up the noses of, of the establishment. To me, there's nothing at all interesting about Manxi, no. I would never have said this five years ago when there wasn't a big thing about him. You know, when I saw his stuff around, I thought, well, that's an entertaining bit of rubbish on the wall. But now I'm supposed to take all this stuff seriously. And I don't really know what I'm supposed to say. You know, it, it's quite obvious that he isn't really anything. So I've been talking to the DJ Danger Mouse about trying to vandalise some pop act or hijack somebody who was in the charts. And then suddenly we found out that Paris Hilton was going to make a, a record and we had like three weeks to turn it around before the CD was in the shops. It was an idea that was just waiting for Paris Hilton to happen. I messed around with the visuals, and then Danger Mouse sort of turned the album into this one long track where she just repeats herself over and over again. Maggie, Maggie Dot, that's hot. We packaged it up, we put it in the cases, and then me and two other guys split up and went across the country reverse shoplifting. We put out 500 of them, which I think probably turned out to be a, a fair percentage of what she actually sold. I mean, what can they do for? Littering, maybe, I guess. Now, is he a genius or is he a vandal? Banksy, the so-called guerrilla artist whose work raises eyebrows and temperatures in equal measure, has opened his latest exhibition in the United States. I guess I fancy going somewhere a little bit warmer. So we ended up in Los Angeles and, you know, it's this really glamorous town that also has this dirty side to it, but above anything else, it's like the easiest place in the world to rent an elephant. I was fortunate because I went to the opening of Fairly Legal, which was incredible. And, you know, in terms of sort of art experience, really one of the, you know, the all-time great experiences, just such a visual overload of being in... Um, in a highly dodgy area in LA. I mean, I really worried about getting out of my car when I, when I went and being confronted with a live elephant and seeing the art everywhere. I think Banksy's work is really, really powerful. It's, it's more than just leaving a, a mark on the street. It's really making a statement. It's, it's talking about politics. It's talking about life. It's talking about the things art should be talking about. On the back of L.A., these pieces just shot through the roof. You know, it was literally front page shoes. What a money would normally bring it was given over to Banksy. When the paintings suddenly started going for, like, really big money, it definitely weirded me out, and I kind of went away to the middle of nowhere, and I stopped making any more paintings. But uh, the whole time, the auction houses were just selling paintings that I'd done years before and sold for not much money or paintings that I traded for a, a haircut or, you know, an ounce of weed. They were going for like 50 grand. When um, people queue up to see a Banksy show or they're, they're paying hundreds of thousands of pounds at Sotheby's, I don't feel despairing or bewildered or baffled. I mean, it's a sort of social phenomenon. It's people suddenly get a craze you know, there's a craze on for art at the moment. It's a combination of accessible and weird and, and um, uh, exotic. Art or vandalism? Vandalism or art? It's a philosophical conundrum to which the only proper answer can be 
Who cares? It's worth a fortune. Get a jackhammer, rip it out, and sell it to the highest idiot. Bidder. Street art is street art when it's on the street. You know, auctioning off a piece of sort of, uh, you know, brickwork and doors is, is slightly obscene, you know what I mean? But there's always going to be someone who's going to go, I want that, it's mine, you know. What can you do about it? Like I said, it's, it's, an, it's, it's part of the world we live in. Well, there's an interesting argument about when is graffiti graffiti and when is it art? And typically in Islington, with the case of Banksy, we've come to recognise that as art. So we do make an exception for Banksy in Islington, and that's one piece of what might be styled graffiti by some that we tend not to remove. I've got absolutely no idea where he's going to go next, but for years now he's constantly surprised me with where he's gone. And I have no doubts that, you know, he'll just carry on making amazing art, wherever it turns up. I thought it was really funny in a lot of ways. Uh, though there was one part that was really sad to me, and that was the salami that was sliced. <laughs> so it was effective, but it was depressing. I remember all too well how, you know, what a lock the art world had on artists, and how it, you only went through the gallery system. That's the only way you did it. He's gone round that, you know, he's done it through the internet, he's done it through the streets, he's done it a different way. So just on purely social, artistic, behavioural terms, he's mounted a revolution. It's great, I guess, when your paintings are hanging up in a museum. But I can't help feeling it was a bit easier when all I had to compete against was a dustbin down an alley rather than, you know, a Gainsborough or something. In a traditional, illegal graffiti world, we hadn't realised that we were all fucking artists. And slowly, you know, we all grew up and thought, fuck me, I wouldn't mind painting a canvas too. Or I wouldn't mind cutting a stencil. He just got a fucking head start on us. For any great art, you know, like Van Gogh or anything, it's like watching someone struggle. So for Banksy, there's a real struggle between a lot of complicated things, you know, like money and power and fame and success or non-success and the fucking law and how's he going to keep it going. Whether he will last or not, you know, I can't, I can't say that, you know, no one can. If you stuck me in a corner and I stuck a gun to my head and I, and I would say, yes, I think he will. So the question, is it something that's ephemeral and will all be forgotten in ten years? I mean, I've already forgotten it. Graffiti's always been a temporary art form. You make your mark and then they scrub it off. Most of it is just designed to look good from a moving vehicle. Not necessarily in the history books. But, I mean, maybe all art is just about trying to live on for a bit. I mean, they say you die twice. One time when you stop breathing, and a second time a bit later on when somebody says your name for the last time. Mm -hmm.